you got to do it for real. Like we're out there where it says with right. a sincere heart and real yes. attempt. You are listening to Saints in the South. All right, uh, welcome to another episode of Saints in the South, number 49. 49. 49. 49, baby. Joe Montana, 49. (laughs) Hey, we are. Gave my age away. We are in the South. (laughs) 49. uh, Representing Saints everywhere. We are not your granny Sunday school class. Nope. And we are your source for gospel growth and good times. Got all them taglines in there. Got them all in. All, all right. the taglines within taglines. <laughs> hey, y'all go ahead and uh, hit those subscribe buttons on YouTube and your podcast platforms. Uh, Apple, it. Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Um, continue to share this thing. We are combined with our 6,000 podcast downloads. With our YouTube v- views, we are just under 12,000 views and and listen so crazy wow that's right we hope to have twelve thousand by the end of the year so y'all help us out there we can do it and we got big news today today is marcus's birthday Uh birthday, marcus Marcus. 43 i was trying to i was gonna try to be the same age as how many episodes we did it didn't work out yeah right right. (laughs) we should have down a little bit (laughs) Mm. (laughs) oh yeah happy birthday marcus yes yes Big birthday cake emoji here. <laughs> that's, okay. right, that's right. That's where Mark is thankful for Zoom. Otherwise, he'd get a cake in the face at the exactly. end of the episode today. We exactly. had it all planned out. All, all over the whole time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, fellas, this is our last episode as it pertains to the Book of Mormon Come Follow Me curriculum. So it's, yes. uh, it's been a good ride this year so far. Been a good Man. ride. Can't believe, man! What what a what a year! <laughs> five hundred five hundred thirty one pages later. That's, hey, but twenty 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 didn't do one thing. It didn't stop. Saints that's right. That's, that's right, right. That's right. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, we'll go ahead and jump in here um, just to kind of set things up. So, last chapter, the Book of Mormon, chapter chapter ten, and uh, kind of in my mind, this is this is what I envision. Moroni, he has a few plates, and he has to decide what is it that he's going to close with. Um, I think of a big book report at the end of your school year or something like that, and you got to figure out what, how, to, how to kind of wrap that book report up. In, Anybody, um, what happened there, Kenny? I'm uh, having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Huh? <laughs> Good never, never mind the man behind the curtain. What We've been having those all, all morning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but this one's a little different moroni's moroni's having to put an end cap on somebody else's book report right his his, his father's a mormon yep. he's compiled yep. everything abridged everything and and we know that the, the moroni isn't too fond of, of writing and everything but i think he does a perfect job in and bringing a uh, an end to the to the book of mormon here and so yeah. we'll go ahead and jump in and uh Y'all let us know uh, I, what, what you got, fellas. Man, I, I like whenever you said that he was trying to fill out that last that last sheet, um, you know, of metal there. Um, I really do believe that he he, he wasn't going to leave anything blank. I think he would have felt like, oh, there was a little bit of room on there. I should have, you know, I really right. think he was filling it up, man. It, you know, why not? I mean, he's he's got he's got it, and uh, here we go. So I just thought it was interesting when you said that <laughs> that he was trying to fill out the rest, That's trying right. to fill out the rest of them sheets. I mean, it's true. I, I really feel like he would he would have been like, ah, oh, left like a space this big. I could have wrote something. So, <laughs> That's right. But um, <laughs> what, what I love though, you know how it is when you when you like, I, or at least with me when I was in school, when you try to finish like a. You have to have so many words for a report or something. Oh, You'll yeah. start repeating yourself so much. Right, it's like, right. I kind of already wrote that. Uh, I mean, he, you know, Moroni does very well with not doing that. I mean, he, oh, yeah. he, of course, of course, he continuously testifies of the gospel and of Jesus Christ. But man, there's so much good stuff in this chapter. I was saying that to uh, Kenny earlier before we got started that uh, I've got more notes, it seems like, for this one chapter than I have probably for the whole book of Moroni, it seems like. Um, there's just a lot of good stuff here in this last chapter. So what he wrote down was good. So let's jump oh, yeah. into the meat of it, I guess. <clears throat> the verb, the verb we don't use much now that you see many times is exhort. Yeah. Yeah. Exhort. You know, I think it's mentioned in eight verses there, but, um, which means, you know, strongly encourage to urge, 
Um, so that's uh, a word we don't use much now, but um, Rowan, I thought was much needed. I, but um, that yeah. that promise, man that that's the big thing right off the bat is the promise, you know, and exhort, you know, is is a great way to start it off. Obviously, it's not just I invite you; it's like I exhort you. But I always thought of that line right there: "If it be wisdom in God that you should read them," you know, talking about the Book of Mormon, these things that he's wrote. And uh, I always thought, well, of course it's wisdom of God for us to read this. What does that mean? And the more I pondered it and thought about it, um, I, th I think it just means that, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, go to God for wisdom. And, uh, and so in other words, if you have wisdom, or if you, if you are searching for wisdom in God, you will read them. You know what I'm saying? You'll, you'll find them. And I think that's kind of what it means there. It's not so much that the Lord's just saying, and two, he's probably thinking, you know, I'm going to seal them up in the ground. And I hope the Lord, if, if it's got to your generation, you know, if this, if you know, it didn't come out in 1600s, you know what I'm saying? So they didn't get a chance to read these things, uh, immortality, um, in mortality. It sounds like I said immortality. So those people didn't get to, but we did, you know, we get to read these things. And so it, it was wisdom and God that it came out during our time. And uh, so there's a lot of things there in that line. There's so many things here in this promise as we go, but yeah. And, and how, and you got to take it, you got to do it for real. Like we're out there where, where it says with right. a sincere heart and real intent. Yes. I remember, yeah. you know, as a missionary, this is, that's your go-to scripture. That's when, you know, that you, that's the promise, you know, yep. Roll 9, 10, 3 through 5. You always read it. You ask your investigator to read it. Um, people, you are uh, just wanting, to, you're wanting to invite um, people to learn of the truthful uh, truthfulness of the Book of Mormon and the power of it. And I remember uh, there in Uruguay, there was a guy named Javier. I felt the spirit. My Spanish was down. It was good. And I was reading it, and I was um, rolling my tongue, just really good with the language. Reading it, felt the, felt the spirit really strong. That's what I really remember the most, the feeling the spirit. He looked at me. He's like, cool. Uh, see you later. <laughs> and you're anyway. <laughs> like, what? But. Come to find out, I left the Book of Mormon, and um, months, months later, I went. We had a little uh, bus station where all missionaries met, and I was checking on this area, and um, that I was in, and um, and a guy, a guy told me, "Hey, man, I, I met a guy named Javier. He uh, he took the Book of Mormon serious when we went by this time, and he read the wow. promise, but with real intent and with a sincere heart. The You're time right. before he didn't. He just like cool, you know, whatever. But oh, yeah. uh, it takes action. It takes faith." And um, it's a great promise and how powerful the Book of Mormon is. It, it, I mean, out of all the books in the world, you can truly read the Book of Mormon and feel the power of it. You know, President, yeah. President Ezra Taff Benson was real big on that. You know, he was – all of them have, but I remember he kind of um, reminded us more in my lifetime of Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon. Yeah, Book Ezra Taff Benson. Flood the earth with the Book of Mormon. Oh, exactly. Ezra and, was it, and was it Joseph Smith that said that a man would get nearer to God – by, mm, by, by right. exactly right. sets than, the than other any book. other book. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Keep talking about religion. Yep. I also like in uh, these this promise here, three through five. Um, it makes me. It's similar to the tithing scripture and promise in that in that where God says, "Prove me now herewith about tithing." Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think I think of this in kind of the same light. You know, the Lord is saying, "Put it to the test." Okay. Yeah. Put it to the test, and I promise you it will ring true in your heart. Yeah. Yes. You know, that there's a lot of things here. Uh, you know, here, here, this is interesting. I thought it, you know, it's, I, I like in verse three. Um, uh, so he's, he's, you know, it says that you would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men from the creation of Adam, even down until the time that you shall receive these things and ponder it in your hearts. Um, remember the Lord's mercy from Adam until now and ponder it in your hearts. Where would we read about the merciful you know, how merciful God is, uh, since the time of Adam, you know, that's, you know, obviously we'd have to go to the Bible. Yeah. And, um, and so the thing that we see is that the book of Mormon is, is a companion to not a rival of the Holy Bible. I mean, that, that's just as obvious right here as anything. So he's saying, remember these things, remember all the things that you've read and things that you know about God, take all those things you know, about Adam and about Moses or Noah or, you know, you know, all the way through, remember all these wonderful things. And then it says in verse four, and when you shall receive these things, and that goes off what Andrew was talking about, 
you know, I don't think that it means just receiving the Book of Mormon in your hand. I think it's receiving it into your heart and oh, yeah. receiving it into your mind, like really taking it on and saying, you know what, I'm going to really dive into this, you know, uh, with an open mind and receive it. And, uh, and so that's, that's the, uh, that's the thing here is how, how do we receive it? Just like Andrew said, he, he left a book of Mormon with him, but you know, Javier didn't really do anything with yeah. it until maybe a little later. He really received it later, even though he physically received it, he had to internally spiritually receive it. So that's pretty cool too. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's thousands of people around the world every year that pray that prayer, you know, about yeah, exactly. to ask if the book of Mormon is true and, you know, they receive the same answer. And I think the, uh, yeah, what y'all was saying about, uh, with a sincere heart really makes a difference because I know I've, I have seen, you know, people in Facebook groups and stuff talk about they, well, right. I read the book of Mormon and I prayed about it and God told me it was false and stuff. Well, yeah, exactly. you know, I, I can't, I can't tell what's in a person's heart, but I really, I really feel like those people might not have been praying sincerely or they would have gotten the same answer that, you know, thousands and thousands of other people do every year because God doesn't lie. God's not going to tell right. one thing to one person, another thing to another person. Um, so yeah, that's really, we, we have that's to be a bold sincere. Statement. And that's a bold statement too, you know, to be, to, to, to yeah. tell someone, if you, if you truly read this one with real intent, with a sincere heart, God will let you know that it is true. Right. Oh, Absolutely. I, I think it's interesting too, in, in verse four, and, and there's a great, and I read this last night, actually, I didn't find it until last night, but there's a great talk from uh, the April, 1994, way back, way back. Um, 84. April, <laughs> way back. No, not in 94, 1994. Oh, Did wow. I say 84? I'm sorry, 1994. Um, <laughs> I, was, I must've been thinking of Van Halen or something. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Well, let's so 1994 is Jason not, Aldean. <laughs> and Joe yeah, that's, yeah. That's, Two ends of the spectrum. All right. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, it's called Moroni's Promise. It's by Gene R. Cook uh, of the 70s, April 1994, Enzyme. He, and here, here's the cool thing. So, so there's another part in there, and it says, ask if these things are not true. Right? I've always read that and thought that's just the weirdest, most specific right. thing. And, and uh, Jackson, you sort of touched on this. And it says, um, he said, um, it's not to ask if they're true or not, but to ask if these things are not true. So what does that imply? Well, that implies that we, he goes on to talk about it here, uh, Gene R. Cook. He says, uh, the Lord does not ask us to prove that the teachings we have read are true or that they are not true. That is the kind of objective approach one might take in an academic scientific world. He said, the Lord offers us the opportunity to let him confirm truth already in our hearts. Uh, but in for order to conf um, confirm religious truth, one must have at least an idea or the thought or the belief, however small, that he has found something true and then pray to receive the Lord's confirmation. Uh, in other words, the Lord wants us to, like we said before, receive these things. Just as Moroni said, we're going to receive these things into our hearts with an open mind and to you know, recognize the good that's in it. And then ask the Lord, you know, are these things not true? In other words, um, I, f I see these things. I, I under, I see them. They s feel good, you know, and then ask him, are these things not true? And, uh, and that's the way to approach it more or less. And he even talks about a friend that he tried to, he gave a book of Mormon to, uh, long time ago, you know, uh, years and years. And this friend never would commit, couldn't never do it. He read the book of Mormon several times. And so he said, I asked him to explain to me once again, how he was reading the book of Mormon. He said he was reading it to find out if it were true while we were talking, it dawned on him that he had never read the Bible that way. He had always read it in faith and it was from the Lord or that it was from the Lord and then had sought confirmation of its truths. He had yeah. changed. He had a change of spiritual perspective as he realized the process for reading the book of Mormon should be exactly the same way. And it hit me when I read that. I thought that's, that's the form. That's the way that that works. It's not just hold the book in your hand and stare at it and say, Lord, is this a true book? I mean, you know, I mean, I guess somebody, I mean, if the Lord wanted to confirm it that way to you could, I guess, but, he really wants us to dive into it, understand and see that there's good in it. And then ask the Lord, is this not true? Like, you know, and so it, that's the way to approach it, approach it with faith. And uh, of course, Moroni lays all that out, but there's, there's a lot to this, 
to this, how this formula works. It's not just, you got to really dive in and understand the steps and, and really how to properly do it. You know, a lot of people don't, uh, don't really know that and, and have, and I know people in my own life that have, have said, yeah, I prayed about it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't feel just right. like Kenny was saying. And, uh, so, you know, I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if y'all seen that video of that Baptist pre minister that was baptized into yeah. the church. That's the thing, man, that, that I love that when he said that he said he got an answer, but his wife was like, how can you get an answer? And I, I don't get anything. I, I don't, or whatever. And he said, uh, he said, because I've read, studied and pondered and all you've done is ask the Lord to tell me I'm wrong, <laughs> you know, talk to my, <laughs> himself, you know, and I just think that's true, man. What is our real intent? What is our angle? How are we coming at it? Are we truly reading it and looking at it and pondering things that are in it? Or are we just going, ah, you know, I don't believe that's going to be real. And this, I'm, of course, the Lord's yeah. not going to, you know. I think it's like I say all the time, man. I really feel strongly that we we find whatever it is that we're looking for. Whatever Absolutely. it is that you're looking for hard, that's Bingo. what you're going to find. And what you're saying, Mark, is just now reminded me of the uh, really, really cool story. Uh, I will not burn the book. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. They, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Vincenzo Di Francesca, an Italian Protestant minister in the early 1900s. Hundreds gives up his ministry for a book without a name. 20 years later, he discovered is is the Book of Mormon. So for anybody not familiar with his story, in a nutshell, you know, he finds a book sitting on top of a burn barrel on his way home one night uh, and it, yeah. the, the cover is missing and he doesn't know what it is. But at the time, your books were valuable. So, yes, you know, he's like, holy cow, there's a book here, you know. So he grabs it and takes it home and he starts reading, and, you know, the like the, the, the cover's gone, the title pages, he has no idea what it is. And so he starts reading it. And he really gets a strong spiritual impression that this is this is scripture. This is, he's not familiar with. It. He's never read it before, but he really feels strongly about it. And he starts preaching from it, you know, and and uh, his whole congregation is just on fire. They're like, yeah, yeah, this is you know, it's resonating with him. And then later on, he finds out what it is. You know, he has a lot of pressure to know. You need to take that thing and burn it. You know, from yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, and it's no. just like he's already. You know, he's like, I've already received that confirmation. You know, the Lord has already told he me. He can't this. deny it at that point, right? That's, that's Very awesome, good. man. That's, that's perfect. I mean, and, and that's exactly what we're supposed to do. That's how we should yep. approach it, you know. Well, very good. He uh, so Moroni he goes on and he talks about uh, different gifts of the of the spirit and everything, and he lists not gifs. Uh, yeah, that's right. Not gifs. <laughs> not <right>. memes. <laughs> Memes. Exactly. So he he lists he lists you know um, several gifts of the spirit, and there are many gifts of the spirit that are mentioned in the scriptures. Uh, but I'd also like to point out that not all gifts of the spirit and all gifts are are actually listed in the scripture. I know sometimes you know we can. I know I have. I've read across. I'm like, well, that, I don't have that one. I don't have that one. I don't have that one. What, what, what are you? Know, what, what are my gifts? You know. Um, <laughs> But so all, all gifts are not actually listed uh, in in scripture uh, there. So yeah, yeah, not all of them are there. And mm -hmm. I think there's I think there's a reason why, obviously, that he's talking about gifts and things because he's you know think about you know re receiving revelation is a gift, discerning truth is a gift, seeing with, and hearing with spiritual eyes and ears are gifts. I mean, under, understanding and recognizing the words of God are gifts. And so it's no wonder that Moroni is writing about gifts and telling us not to deny them after he just made the promise of how to know the validity of the mm -hmm. Book of Mormon, you know. So, you know, don't deny these things that will allow you to see these things as they are. And, and so that, I think it's I think it's not a coincidence that he's talking about gifts and not to deny gifts in the last days. I think a lot of people cover up their gifts or perhaps never find them because they never look for them. Just as Kenny said, you find what you look for. And, right. uh, and you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's important to, to, to search for those gifts and to develop those gifts. Um, yeah. you know, and some, some come easier than, than, than others. Um, but, uh, it's interesting here. You got the gift of, uh, gift of teaching knowledge and the gift of teaching wisdom. What's yeah. the difference there? I think I think it's kind of like mm -hmm. that whole thing of uh, of knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. I think wisdom could be understanding. I think you can learn a lot of things, but if you don't understand them, like I can learn that you know, I don't know. That well, the, Mormon knowledge, is a, knowledge can be gained from a book. Wisdom yeah. can only be wisdom, gained usually by experience. Exactly. exactly. That's what I think. So there's, there's yeah. a, it's almost a, it's a it's another level. It's a higher level of yeah. you know taking that knowledge to the next level. Basically. Yeah. 
we just wrap that one up. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting yeah, nasty, I think next topic. <laughs> last, last, no, it's what like, you got, no. Andrew? No, I just think with age, you know, I might, um, I don't know, well, basically what y'all just said, I can't really add too much more to it. We have knowledge, like again, like Kenny said, you get it from a book. I can, I can learn a lot by reading books. Um, but through experience, through trials and through, um, really with age and time comes, it comes wisdom, you know? So, yeah, I think that, you know, that makes sense that, you know, I'm, I'm putting that together now. Think of Oliver Cowdery. Was it Oliver Cowdery that where the Lord said, you, you, you know, you, you've taken no action, save it was to ask me that's all he done he just asked if something was true or or, or, or no he wanted to, to to translate and he wanted the power to translate or whatever and the lord said all you've done is ask me for that power you haven't studied it out in your mind you haven't done the proper steps and so i think that's the difference in having a knowledge and then of course having the wisdom or understanding you have to put like kenny said you got to put the work in you got to put some some work in yeah. and uh Very and good. so that's you know that's what it is all right, everyone. Well, this is where we're going to bring our Come Follow Me Book of Mormon discussions to a close. Uh, we've, had, we've had a lot of fun um, discussing uh, the different aspects of the Book of Mormon and different insights and things that we've taken away uh, from them personally. Uh, we hope that uh, you that have watched and listened over the year that you've been able to uh, take something away from the insights that, that we've given. Uh, we especially hope that you've had uh, some good personal studies, some good family studies on your own as well, and uh, further strengthen your testimony of the Book of Mormon, as well as uh, strengthen your, your own testimony in relationship with Jesus Christ, which is what this is all about. Um, as we stated earlier, the Book of Mormon will draw us closer to God uh, than, than any other book here on earth, as the prophet Joseph Smith uh, stated. But uh, we would like to close by reading the last three verses here in chapter 10 verses 32 to 34 it says yea come unto christ and be perfected in him and deny yourselves of all ungodliness and if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love god with all of your might mind and strength then is his grace sufficient for you that by his grace ye may be perfect in christ and if by the grace of god ye are perfect in christ ye can in no wise deny the power of god and again, if ye by the grace of God are perfect in Christ and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ by the grace of God through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is in the covenant of the Father unto the remission of your sins, that ye become holy without spot. And now I bid unto you all farewell. I soon go to the rest in the paradise of God until my spirit and body shall again reunite. And I am brought forth triumphant through the air to meet you before the pleasing bar of the great Jehovah the eternal judge of both quick and dead. Amen. And so Moroni closes it out there by focusing on the grace of Christ. Ultimately, it is through his grace that we are all saved. Um, we look forward to more discussions uh, next year with the Doctrine and Covenants. Uh, we do have one more episode this year, uh, which is going to be our 50th episode. And uh, it just so happens to fall on the week of Christmas. So we're pretty excited about that and hope we can bring you some Christmas spirit and, uh, and especially uh, focus on uh, the reason for the season, uh, our Savior Jesus Christ. And until then and until next time, y'all keep on striving. Mm -hmm.